There is no welcome. There is no intro. There is only no fate. But what we make. I am technically not a technician, and today we'll be going over the no fate mod for the arcade one-up cab by misdirection of the popular group team in Coda. However, I'll be back after this legal mumbo jumbo. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. Let me start by saying misdirection made this soft mod very easy. I'm a little upset that it was so easy and took no time at all. There are only three items needed for this mod. First is an SD card. You'll need at least an 8GB card. However, if I heard correctly, misdirection may expand on this mod at a later date, so you may wish to use a larger one. For this build, I'll be using a 64GB card. If you wish to have full functionality, you'll also need to download the latest version of the No Fate mod from Misdirection's Patreon. He has set up multiple tiers, he has made it affordable for everyone, and most importantly, you'll be helping support his work. Please look for Misdirection's Patreon link above, and I'll be sure to place the link in the description of this video as well. If you're unable to show your support, Misdirection has also made the beta version available on the Internet Archive. The last item we'll need for our mod are the ROMs that are listed in the README file. I am unable to link you to these downloads. However, I believe that it's safe to say that I found mine on the Internet Archive, and I was able to do so by googling the keywords Internet, Archive, and No Fake Version 1 ROM Pack. After you've downloaded all of the needed files, you'll need to insert your SD card into your PC and open Etcher or a program similar to it. Once you have Etcher or your preferred program open, locate and open the NoFate image. We'll next need to select the SD card that we will be using, and as you can see, Etcher has found and selected my 64GB card. Please make sure you verify that you are writing to the correct card. If you select the wrong media, the image will overwrite any data you had, and all data on that media will be lost. After you've verified that the right SD card is selected, you'll want to click on the icon labeled as Flash. Once this is done, Etcher will start the process of flashing the image onto the SD card. When I did this action, it took Etcher about 40 seconds to complete. Your time will depend on the type of card you use and the speed of your system. Once Etcher is done flashing the SD card, it will also validate that the image flashed correctly and without issues. You are given the option to skip this step. However, I will not be doing so, as I wish to verify that the image is correct, and I do not wish to brick my T2 cab. Validating the flash only takes about 30 seconds, and it makes me feel confident that my cab will work fine after the modding process is done, so I'll be doing so. Once Etcher is done, exit the program, then safely eject your SD card, and let's move over to our T2 cab. We'll need to get inside our cab, so I'll be pulling mine away from the wall, and I'll be removing the back panel so I can access the PCB board that is mounted to the back of the monitor. Once we've gained access to the PCB board, we'll need to insert our SD card with our no-fate image into it, and when done, we can move to the front of the cab. At the front of the cab, we simply need to power the cab up and let the image on the SD card run. Most of this is 100% automated. However, at the beginning we are asked if we'd like to revert back to stop by pressing the player 2 button, and we are warned that this will factory reset our cab. However, we're also told that if we'd like to move forward we'll need to press the player 1 button. After making that selection, the system will run giving you details of the process as it goes. The full process took about 4 minutes for me, and your time may be different depending on the size and speed of your card. It's recommended to use a quality SD card, and remember the better the card, the better the chances this mod will come out correct and without issue. It's also important to note that after doing this mod, I am only able to power the unit down by holding down the off button for 4 or 5 seconds. Some may find this frustrating, but it is not a game ender for me. After powering off your cab, remove the SD card, and let's move back to our computer so we can add our ROMs to the SD card. Once I am back on my personal computer, I will locate the location where I have placed my ROMs, and then I will copy them from the location where I have them stored to the folder on my SD card that is designated for ROMs. Very easy to do, and simple. But wait, what could this folder be that seems to be labeled as Hipsius? Could this be for Daphne gun games? 
A fast Google search seems to support that idea, but I've got to admit, that's total speculation on my part and nothing more. Good lord, I do hope I'm right. I think it would be cool to have Laserdisc games on this cab. Now that I'm done speculating, let's copy all of these ROMs to the SD card's ROM folder. This action took me about one minute to do. Again, your time will be different, and it will be dependent on the size of the card you have, the speed of that card, and the speed of your computer. Regardless, do not rush this process. Let all of the files copy over, and know that we're just about done. Once you're done copying the ROMs to the SD card, move the SD card back to the cab and apply power to the unit. If you've done everything correctly, you should be presented with a really cool intro video from the movie and a new team encoder menu option on the bottom left side. Your mod is now complete, and to be blunt, it would be very difficult to make this any easier. I've got to take this opportunity to thank Miss Direction for this awesome mod. You, Miss Direction, just helped me turn a fun cab with just a single game into a powerhouse of emulation and multi-cade fun. I cannot thank you enough for this small miracle you've given the community. You, Mystery Encoder, and, of course, all of Team Encoder really make our home arcades a better place. Thank you all. I also want to give a shout out to my buddy Mark for all the parts to this T2 cap that you freely gave to me so I could do this mod. That really means a lot to me, and of course, this mod and video would not be possible without your support or the efforts of misdirection. Thank you both. So, as for the final thoughts on this mod, well, let's start with how many fixes Misdirection has put in place since he first released this mod. The big one for which I feel many people are waiting is the rollback option. I've not played with that option yet to confirm that it is working, but I've no reason to think it would not. It's nice to see that if you'd like to, you're able to get your system back to stock. I also loved seeing the extra ROM folder for what I'm guessing are laser disc based games. Both are really cool additions, but if we're being honest, when I noticed I could exit ROMs, this happened. Oh, they got the exit functionality working like a song bitch. Yes, that's right, you can exit ROMs, and you can exit the SAM menu. How cool is that? If you've stuck around this long, I'd like to thank you for checking out the video. That means a lot to me, and I do hope you enjoyed it and found the video informative. If you did, then I'd ask that you like this video and leave me a comment. If you've not done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing this video with a friend. These are all small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, those small clicks mean the world. Thank you.